David Kramer's Orpheus in Africa is currently showing at the Fugard Theatre. Now, the play follows the life of Orpheus Mukadu, a true story. <laughs> Joining me in studio are actors Sneh Lathla and Dean Valley. Hello. Hello, <laughs> So many names in that intro to remember. Jeez. How do you remember your lines? I mean, every time I have theatre actors in here, I'm so impressed that they can remember uh, the lines for a whole two-hour play, and I can't even mm. remember the lines for my mm. intro. Well, I think the the young five weeks are sufficient. Yeah, enough to mm. it, bec it becomes it becomes body memory at the end of the day. Mm. Mm. You re you, you remember lines rather where you stand and what you do instead mm. of just going through your mind. Yeah. yeah. So like usually when you change positions, that's where the mess <laughs> up happens <laughs> now. <laughs> what, what comes here? <laughs> yeah. Now the play is phenomenal. Congratulations! I saw it last yeah, night. It's you. really great. You're both. Very good in it. Did you know the story of Orpheus McAdoo before you um, read the script? Well, for myself, no, I mm. didn't. I, I didn't. It was, it was genuinely the first time I ever heard of that story. Yeah. Um, my, my only reference to Orpheus McAdoo was when I was watching David Kramer's Guma. Mm. And they had like a short excerpt about Orpheus McAdoo and this American singer that came to South Africa. But other than that, I had no, no idea who he was. Mm. It's such an incredible story, and it's one that people should know, so I'm so happy that it's showing at the Food Guard. What's the most, um, what do you take away from, from Orpheus's story? What's the one thing that sticks with you guys? Mm. Yo, uh, well, for me, because I, I feel like the, the character that I play as well um, resonates uh, with me personally. And I like that he he has a growth that he he gets a platform to perform on, mm. and that well his mm. basic story is that people always um, they, they they don't see that he's an artist that just loves performing. He loves doing what he does. Yeah. And that it doesn't make him a bad person, even mm. though he's doing coonery. Um, but he he really loves the arts, and I, I think that resonates with me that I, I get to play that character. Um, mm. And there are people like that who have existed because it's based on a true story and a true mm. character. Mm. Um, yeah, but that's me. Yeah, for me, it's, it's, you know, the whole identity thing of finding yourself and who you are. You know, mm. you, you, have a, you have a vision of yourself on what you want to achieve, but actually going deep and going like, you know, this is actually who I am. And not being afraid to, to be you is the one thing that I think in Orpheus is, is really true for me. Mm. 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 Talk us through the characters you play. They are very <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> Which ones? Yeah, yeah there's so oh. many. <laughs> oh. Well, I play Ernest Logan, which is uh, based on Ernest Hogan. Uh, he wrote All Coons Look Alike to me way back in the day. And he was one of the forefathers of syncopated ragtime music. Mm. Well, that's based on him. Mm -hmm. And then I play uh, Mr. Finnegan, which is a reporter of the Indianapolis Freeman. And with my assistant photographer, Amos <laughs> Hufflepuff. <laughs> 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 and then uh, we play Malay choir people, Kapok and Pap. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so for myself, excluding the assistants <laughs> <laughs> and Pap. <laughs> Love that name, Pap. I also play Egbert Washburn, which is the second half of our comic duo mm. that mm. we do. And then it's the student leader and the trooper. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty fantastic, actually, because uh, nobody knows what happens backstage with the number of characters that we yeah. play. That was my next <laughs> question. How on earth do you keep track of all these characters and costumes and well, you run backstage and how do you know, like, what's going on back there? Well, you just, well for myself, was, I just put the costume in order, like, okay, this character's coming out yeah. of this. And then, like, once you go off stage, you go off calmly. And the minute you're off stage, excuse me, get out of the way, I need to get this costume. Yeah. <laughs> get just before the station. Calm demeanor. Yeah. It's crazy. Behind it it, it crazy. gets pretty chaotic it's, uh, back there. Mm. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a different play. I wish, I wish people would film that and show that. Mm. <laughs> we should do that. Because yeah. also it, some, sometimes you hear a cue where you know you need to be on stage just now, but you're not done being changed. <laughs> so, and you're like, oh my goodness, I need to be on stage just now. And just like, yeah. trying to put stuff on, you're sprinting to get there, and you're huffing and puffing, people don't know why. <laughs> just keep it together. Mm. <laughs> Have you ever put the costumes in the wrong order mm. and then half put one on and then realized or? Yeah, realized halfway that, wait a, wait a minute, like, oh wait, no. We're well, expecting well with this run because there's been uh, a few changes to compare to the first run mm. and um, well, I'm loving the new script, it's really, really great. Mm. And, but there's some cues that we remember from the old show yeah. that I end up putting on other costume because of that cue that I remember and I'm like, no, it's different now, so you take this <laughs> off and put it back on. And then sometimes, well, for me, like one day I forgot my costume 
You just I, forgot I, it. No, I forgot. I forgot to check it and place it there, and I started stressing. I'm like, it's my costume. It's my costume. Yeah. I'm running out of time now. I'm like, I need to go on stage just now. And you just flipping. sometimes, sometimes you you miss something and you just have to leave it and get on that stage. Yeah, I, I remember one one night I forgot a coat uh, I was supposed to wear <laughs> and I left it upstairs. Now the thing is, the costume lady she'll place everything. Mm. And this was in the second act, so you were supposed to do your, your checks and whatever. That night, I didn't. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up putting on a random jacket and just going out. And just like, like, yeah. just make it work. <laughs> the next day, you have your young notes. Yeah. Um, that coat was, did you? Sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> fix that. Sure. Yeah. It's crazy though, because we also we have a lot of costume changes, mm. so it's a lot to I think love, about. Yeah. And even within, like with our costumes, it's, we have a lot of costume. Because if you look at yeah. Egbert uh, and Ernest, <laughs> our costumes like themselves they don't make sense because <laughs> the characters that crazy. There's They're so many bits and favorites. pieces and, <laughs> and crazy things all over. So sometimes, yeah. like the spats, sometimes I forget the spats because mm. it's just so many things that you have to put on. You're like, oh, mm. the spats, and you remember you remember on stage while you're busy singing the song. Mm. Oh, then you're like. Tomorrow. 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 Tomor